Let me get started today. Uh, this is the Towns uh, Hopkinson Planning Board for Tuesday, September 15, 2015. Uh, I'd like to thank HCAM for recording the meeting. We're missing a couple of members, I think, tonight, and that might be helpful so that they can review the meeting and uh, perhaps vote on it if they this is the only one they missed. We always just thank HCAM for recording the meeting. Uh, from an agenda standpoint, we've got three public hearings and I guess continued public hearings. It's the main part of the meeting tonight. Uh, two of the three are probably going to be continued again for various reasons. Uh, and the solar panel, I have a feeling that we can come to a conclusion on that tonight. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank on behalf of the planning board most of us, I think we're all at the uh, party over this weekend. I think that the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee did an outstanding job. And uh, I'd like to thank, uh, on our all behalf, Gene Bergson, uh, Anna Conan, I think I pronounced it, of course, my right, I didn't, I'm sorry. Michelle Murdoch, Scott Richardson, Craig Stanley, and they had, those are the members of the committee. Gene is uh, chair of that committee. Uh, associate members were Ann Click and Eric Sonnet. And uh, Ann Click also is the chairman of the Friends of the Hopkinton Anniversary Committee. I mean, from the fireworks to the parade, I mean, it was outstanding with the fountain uh, or, uh, restart flow uh, on Friday night. It's a, a fantastic weekend. I think everyone in Hopkinton appreciated it. I know we all appreciate it. It's, uh, it's an event that brings the community together. Um, thank you again for all, to all the celebrations. It was worth waiting 300 years for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be around for, for, for the next for the 600. But, uh, I'm hoping to make it for the, 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 the 325, but I probably won't be in the cake making for this back then. But you never know. Um, let's see. We might have one more member. I'm going to do one item before we get into the first public hearing. This is uh, Hunters Ridge Subdivision's request to adjust the performance guarantee amount in at least eight lots. And uh, yeah, I think we need two, two votes on that. One to uh, accept or add to the performance uh, guarantee of an amount of $51,899, which is the engineer's supplementary amount. So, uh, yeah, and that's on the sheet before you. Is there any discussion further of that and questions? I drove through it today. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it's going on. And the fact that you're asking for eight lot releases, meaning it must be selling pretty well, too. Because you usually come in only one at a time, I know. Things were slower, yeah. So uh, they're, they're selling. Things are going like they want. Great. And it's time to connect everything and not be held back. So we want to just release everything and work the whole thing at once. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to increase $51,899 the amount of forms of the for Hunter's Bridge. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. For the discussion, so you want to have a vote. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. The next part of that is lot release for lots. You can read them. Go, please. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Uh, looking for a motion uh, to release the lots as a lane red. So, so moved. Second. Moved seconded. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Oh, no, there's a form coming around. I think we need to use five figures. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Okay. I think at this point we're ready to uh, 
open the public hearing. On 3440 Hayden Road Street, site plan review, RPI Hopkinton LLC. This is proposed uh, parking lot modifications and stormwater management facilities. And I think Claire is in direct butter, is, is uh, leaving the board. Uh, site plan review, we need five votes to pass that so we have enough in place. So, the uh, applicant come on down and members of the team. Now, to kind of introduce this to the, to the uh, public, we have a hearing outline for those that haven't been part of our procedures. And uh, Maybe you give, and, and basically, we're going to go through the outline and try to organize our thoughts in, in a way to get, get through the, the items. Um, we have uh, we found this to be a little bit more efficient way to, to get through a site plan review. We do entertain public comment both to add to the outline, uh, where we'll then we'll have detailed discussions at that point, and then there's a kind of summary before we go to public comment type of period. So uh, we hope to get through. We have a, about a half an hour scheduled for this tonight today, uh, and we will uh, hopefully get through some parts of it, and I know there are some action items, I believe, regarding traffic, that we know we don't have everything here anyway today, and, and there are some items to review. So let's start off the outline with the project introduction and, and, and kind of a, a summary review of the, the project from the applicant. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Jerry Upper. I'm an attorney with Hopkins and Ashley, and I'm going to make a brief under five minute introduction before turning it over to the professionals. Uh, we're here incidental to a project which is going to eliminate uh, an industrial warehouse use in the so called formerly named Packet Building at the property address, and we're going to convert that space and some office space into 70 and two bedroom condos. Uh, this change of use required in addition to the review here, a non-conforming use extension special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we concluded a series of hearings there on August 26th. The board voted to approve that change in the way we were to consider. So the company that proposed modification for residential use, we will, as you indicated in your summary, make some changes to the parking area, not to increase the parking area size. Can you talk louder because we're getting... Um, yes, I'm sorry. Why don't you shut the door, please? Please, thank you. Office. To accompany the proposed modifications for the residential use, we're making some changes to the parking area, not to expand the footprint um, or to increase the amount of spaces, but to pave the portion of the previously unpaved space space and to install a drainage system, including sub subsurface drainage components. In addition, we're going to be making and proposing certain changes to the exterior of the building the facade, the windows, and access doors, and some landscaping. And in fact, those matters are subject to design review board approval and review. And in fact, simultaneous with the commencement of this hearing, we are appearing downstairs with the other members of our team to kick off that hearing as well. We assume it will be completed in the course and their recommendations will follow. We also recognize that this development seeking to add more than 10 residential units triggers under Section 210.58, the requirement of an affordable unit with the special permit process uh, uh, to this board. Um, the developer is very close to making a determination of what measure of the alternative measures allowable would be utilized to satisfy that. We anticipate that that decision will be made in the next week. 
We will then file the appropriate application. I pulled the new abutters list because my voting expired for quite a few days. We will attempt to coordinate the initial hearing under that with one of the continued sessions before you, as you are the, the special permit granting authority. So we just received yesterday the peer review report at the end of the day, on which staff was nice enough to get to us. We've had a chance to preliminarily review it today, and we feel that we can meet um, all of the matters that were raised by the peer review in due course with appropriate uh, changes, modifications, and requests for additional information. Um, and we anticipate that that process will obviously take a period of time. It is our goal to have that uh, augmentation done, submitted to the peer reviewer for his reviewer, and hopefully back to you for time for you to review it and the time as you need before we have to be meeting again and talk about some of the matters that are subject to that. So with your permission, I'd like to turn it over to Joe Marbonat to do an engineering and engineering project and we're going to sign on. Evening folks, Joe Mark down here. We're joined by Ed Bell, um, facility owner from RPI Hopkinton, and Ron Mueller, uh, traffic engineer, who did the review of um, the uh, conditions around the site. Um, unfortunately, right now in the basement, with Peter Quinn, architect, and Mike Radner, uh, landscape architect, is the other part of the other half of our design team. Um, they have um, changes with them at design review, they have some of the uh, landscape materials and the lighting information. So uh, hopefully they uh, are going to join us and go over some of those items uh, in depth. But I'll start with um, what we have um, on our uh, designs and then uh, move through as well, of course, to make it great and hot and we'll, we'll work it out. Um, I thought I might take a second just to acquaint you with the site. You, you may be familiar with it, uh, as Jerry mentioned, we did have that uh, hearing before the Board of Appeals uh, regarding the use and fleshed out uh, a great many details. This is the site, 2.39 acre site, um, on the west side of Aiden Row Street. Uh, we also have frontage along Church Street to the west, and there are a couple of butters on the southerly side and a couple on the northerly side. Maple Street is about 200 feet. Uh, southerly of the site. What we have um, is an existing parking configuration that was generated from a previous Board of Appeals <coughs> ruling. What we have is, is an existing asphalt parking lot here for parking spaces that provides the drop-off, um, pick-up and drop-off location for the daycare facility. And as you know, we also have the professional office space and the warehouse light manufacturing in this facility now with various access points. There is a gravel parking lot here to the north and west with some uh, landscape plantings to break up that view as, um, as agreed upon in that previous filing. An awful lot of landscaping here along the church tree side, the westerly side, as we closed up a couple of driveway openings and, and augmented what was there, the new plantings, about 10 years ago, Jerry, when that last filing took place. So we have some mature plantings in here along the westerly side. There are existing facilities, water, sewer, and gas from Hayden Row Street, and there is power on the west side from Church Street, and there is limited power telephone here in the northeast corner. Um, lawn, uh, some mature trees, some low shrubs, and a, a couple of, uh, of trees along here along the southerly side. There was some plantings off-site uh, on the owner of the gallery property, uh, what was 2A, and then there's some screening around the existing dumpster here. What uh, we are proposing is to utilize that existing curb cut along Hayden Row Street. It's about 48 feet now. What we want to do is reduce it to 24 feet. So take that width now, which is open pavement, and concrete, and mixed materials, and drag that area in here, which is sidewalk northerly, and landscape that area, add in a monument sign, and try to break up the viewscape uh, along Hayden Road Street. But we will be accessing the same point that we access now, albeit in a smaller space. What we hope to do is create a flow 
similar to what is there now. As Terry mentioned a moment ago, our intent is really to formalize what has been an informal setting here with uh, asphalt and berms and stormwater controls. So we will continue a flow like this, two-way traffic here along the north, two-way in here, two-way here, but one way heading in a southerly direction along the Church Street side. We will continue to allow folks the traditional drop-off space for the daycare. Um, folks like the opportunity to park here, walk their children down along the sidewalk and enter the traditional location here. We're going to add some queuing spaces here. The Kidsboro daycare facility has a split program with younger children and uh, young teens. So there is a second means of egress and access through here, an existing path. So we're going to utilize that. That becomes a hard stop on the southerly side with our parking lot. We're right on top of the gravel that's there now so that those children and parents can access the Kidsboro as they do now. Um, what we have with our, park, our, our access scheme is the access to 96 parking spaces. We were permitted for 105 with that previous filing. Given the uses that we have now, the residential, the professional office, and the daycare, we need 96 spaces. So we're, we are right on the number uh, with our spaces. We have a mix of traditional 9 by 18 and some compact car spaces and some hybrids along the west east side of the building. Uh, the compact spaces will be here and here, traditional throughout the rest, and as I said, um, the, the hybrids in through here. Because of the nature of the product that they want to introduce to the market, we're going to add an open, covered uh, parking area here to provide sound protection to the spaces there. So each of the unit owners will get a designated space under this carport, open at all sides with a roof. 17 spaces in this location here, designated for the unit owners. As I said, daycare will utilize other portions of the site. Professional office will be mixed in, and then um, the other cars associated with the residential use throughout the parking area. So that carport is generally in this location here. The access points are sprinkled throughout the building, having to do with the multi-use. There is a loading dock through here. There are doorways along Hayden Road Street. There's a doorway to the office warehouse space here on the Wolverley side, and the traditional professional office space here in that. We're going to change that up slightly and modify that. The um, residential component of the building will access to this location here, and um, as part and parcel of that is a handicap access ramp at this location here. So a new walkway to a handicap, access, handicap ramp with a switchback, a new doorway, and then the traditional door that exists there now. There will also be an entrance way here to an upper level because of the configuration of the building. They'll be based in first and second floor um, units and part of the residential. So we will be accessing here as well for the residential. And there is a, uh, a walkway anticipated uh, along the northerly side. The business center, the professional office, is going to, uh, as part of this proposal, give up the access here at this location to be re relocated to here. The doorway is now on the northerly side. We're going to switch it around to the easterly side, provide access from Hayden Road via a walkway to that doorway. So our access points for the professional office will now be here. Residential will be here and here, and the daycare will stay the same in these three locations. There are some mechanical rooms, the power here in the northwest corner. That doorway will still allow access uh, to that. But those doorways will still be in existence, but they won't be used as any element of the, the facility. This door here so is the gateable power in that northern corner. The um, surface will now be um, asphalt, the move from asphalt and gravel to um, 
completely paving uh, the entire area. We have introduced uh, some landscape areas inside uh, the parking lots to break that up in accordance with the regulations. And there's some screening for the northerly and southerly sides that Mike Radner has pulled together. We will burn the edges of the parking lot to direct our storm water flows into a closed drainage system. We are mimicking what we have there for grades on the site now. We lift up the center right about here, about five to six inches. So we will have flows to the north and east and to the south. And our drainage system is set up to collect here at the southerly side and then at different areas inside um, the satellite parking lots and here along the north side. Collect all that water. We are going to uh, infiltrate our stormwater water an underground facility, um, the stone pipe at this location that you see here. There will be an overflow that will be incorporated into the grass swales that we have along the northerly side to a rain garden that will allow for uh, infiltration of any overflow. We have also introduced a rain garden near the southerly side to mitigate the impacts from the development for this about a year on the southerly side. The existing playground is here at this location. Kidsboro is a, is a vibrant part of the uh, facility and will remain so. So that, unfortunately, I didn't do a great job of highlighting, but that playground will stay in place and in use for Kidsboro um, going forward. Green, as I said, and uh, I, my graduate was kind enough to share his plan. Um, I don't know if uh, time will allow it, but it may be best suited if Mike could speak to, uh, to his work. But we have screening. Some of the existing trees are lost here on the northerly side. Some are, are dead and I don't think are salvageable. But there is landscaping proposed for the northerly side and the southerly side around our rain garden which will have the low plants. So we'll have the upper story the canopy for the trees, and then we'll have our rain gardens in these locations here. And then uh, we're going to maintain that westerly side, the church street, with that screening that has come in quite well. Uh, and I don't believe there's any augmentation on that westerly side. We are, as a result of the changes, the residential use being more intensive than the warehouse use, we will be increasing our demands for public water and sewer. In anticipation of that, we went to the Department of Public Works and got uh, the approval for an increase to handle our demand for water and sewer. Um, as Jerry mentioned, we received the uh, permit from the Board of Appeals for the change of use. We have no uh, environmentally sensitive areas, no wetlands, uh, no rare species, so we have no other environmental uh, reviews. And that's the uh, general summary of where we're at. Again, because there's things to come. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to the your architects if they come in. We have our traffic person. Oh, we're really happy to have a, an overview of the traffic. I think that should be helpful. Okay. For the record, Ron Miller, traffic engineer on the project. <clears throat> um, I was tasked with identifying the change in traffic generation as a result of uh, the reuse of the property. Uh, and I put this uh, letter together that basically uh, does exactly that. Uh, we counted the traffic in and out of the Hayden Road Business Center, uh, both in the morning peak and the afternoon peak hours, um, to establish what the current traffic generation of that is. Um, and then estimated uh, two things. One, if the building were reoccupied by right, in other words, the existing warehouse space, if it were reoccupied again, if it were the office space fully occupied, I believe there's only about uh, 11,000 square feet currently occupied where it, it has a total of 15,000 square feet of space. Um, and also the uh, Kingsborough Daycare Center, uh, at the time that we did the counts, had 95, ch 95 children uh, at the facility. I believe they're now uh, <coughs> are allowed to have 130 children. So 
if you take all of that into account, the full occupancy of the warehouse space, the the, uh, the office space, and 130 kids in the daycare center, uh, you get to, I'm, I'm sure you have the numbers, but uh, 159 total trips in the, in the morning peak and 140 trips in the, uh, in the afternoon peak. If this building is reoccupied the way that they're proposing here, uh, eliminating the warehouse space, reducing the office space, but putting in the 17 condominium units um, and keeping the daycare center, it amounts to a reduction in traffic of about 29 trips in the morning and about 15 trips in the afternoon. In the peak hours. In the peak hours, correct. I mean, obviously, over what's there today, if you simply compare what's there today with the proposal, uh, it would be a slight increase in traffic. But you have to keep in mind that um, I, I believe the warehouse and office space could be reoccupied tomorrow if a user came in without any permits by the town. I assume. So, and that is essentially uh, the purpose of my letter. I did also review the site plan with respect to access. Um, the reduction in the curb cut width I think is a very beneficial uh, thing. Uh, the 48 foot curb cut right now is very confusing or can be confusing to people who don't know it. You have people going in and out of the daycare center on one half of that access drive and uh, the people in the back, the access the back parking lots on the other half of that. So you have entering and exiting traffic in a very confusing way right now. So reducing that to 24 foot width uh, makes it clear exactly where the entrance and the exits are. Um, it also provides, I believe, some added parking for the daycare center as well. Uh, sight lines are uh, more than adequate. Again, that those things aren't really in the letter because I was tasked with those things, but it's just something that I always take a look at and make sure uh, there aren't any safety issues. Uh, there's more than adequate sight lines in both directions there, so no issue there. And that will answer any questions. In, in the no, I put it in the yeah. 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 slight addition to Ron. I don't know if Ron got the hearing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was going to thank you for yeah. Thanks, sir. Uh, I did get a chance to review Beta's uh, report. They basically, their only comment on, the, on my letter on was that they believe that the numbers that are shown on the table uh, did not reflect the trip generation worksheets that were attached to the letter. Um, they were actually, that's actually incorrect. They do match exactly. And I believe the difference lies in, for the office use, the <coughs> trip rates that I use. This gets a little bit complicated and technical, uh, but I did uh, prepare a response letter to that that will be submitted shortly. And I'm sure when, once Beta takes a look at that, they will concur with our findings. Okay. And from a traffic standpoint, we, we still need a the traffic study and get the outstanding issues, correct? The traffic counts will be updated. The traffic study was part of the submissions right. already. It was reviewed, and I think Ron discussed one of the alleged deficiencies. The other comment that I noticed as a non professional in the area was a recommendation for some increased signage, which of course will be uh, accommodated. Yeah, I think you had indicated before that the traffic counts were going to be taken again after school That's correct. It, it, <clears throat> we can do that, but uh, the, the traffic generation, since the existing, the, the real comparison is what could the site generate with the current uses that are there, and what could the site generate it based on what this proposal reflects. And both use the same standard, the ITE trip generation manual. So forming new counts, I don't think, would really change the results of that because not all of the users today are occupied. So we still have to use the ITE, the same numbers that are in this letter to project for occupancy. If I may, for the chair, uh, I think the point is, though, that during school session, the pattern for daycare is different than it is in the summer. So there would be more of a need for the after school traffic that's a completely different thing you haven't you haven't included in your current account. Yeah but again the uh, might it's just point. more it's, it's adding more to what you have. So I don't see it there. So it's, if it's not there it's not counted. Well I mean we can count it if, <coughs> like I said but, but I don't I think everyone of those in this neighborhood would like to know how much additional traffic there is with your projections with including the traffic on the regular school year. And I think that's what we're asking. 
game. Yeah, I, I think you probably have half of that uh, from your work you've done in the library, too. Well, what, we didn't do the counts at that, at the oh, Angel Business Center, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I, I, I had thought that that was one of the reasons why we were having the theme of that. So that's why I'm asking the question. Um, yeah, I just okay. don't think it's, yeah. I mean, I can provide the information, but I just don't think it's really going to change the conclusions of the letter because we're still comparing what could be there versus what else could be there. Because even though the Kids Pro Day Kids Center has more kids now, the you know, warehouse space and not all of the office space are occupied. Right? <coughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, just for the record, Phil Paris and Dave, we've been reviewing this project. Uh, I talked to him, my traffic engineer, and he, uh, he, I thought he checked the dates of the, uh, when that was taken. But maybe he got the wrong year in terms of the week off that was during vacation week. Uh, that was the library, I think. April? That was the library, I believe. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry. Um, no, they, they, these counts, <coughs> these counts were done in, on, in a, on April 16th, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was not vacation week. Then. The only difference being is that they only had 95 kids then, and they have presumably up to 130 kids now. So that would be the only difference. It's not a matter that school would be session. Okay. And I don't know how long the building has been underutilized or you know under so. I I understand the, the answer, the comparison between what could be there and what, what they're proposing. But I think for, for the local residents, they're going to want to know how many additional cars. And so I, I'm not, I'm not uh, up to speed on the, the history of the building. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, I'm going to next item. We're going to get about another five minutes or so so we can start a little late. So we'll, uh, we'll before we do, kind of a point of clarification. Uh, earlier, we heard that was the meeting that was approved was August 26. Is that correct? Was it July 27th or August 24th? Is zoning board approval? Okay, that was August 26. Okay. I know. Check the decision is not until August 26th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank the only other things I wanted to highlight uh, was just that the Board of Appeals decision is pending, and that should be filed within the next week or so. Town Council is writing the decision. Um, also, that uh, the Zion Board is meeting tonight, I think we should put your attention at all. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was one of the standards requires a sidewalk uh, on all the streets abutting the property, and on Church Street, the sidewalk is on the opposite side of the street. So um, the plan does not show a sidewalk um, in front of this property, but the board has the uh, ability to, to give special consideration for other circumstances. So that's one thing the board will need to discuss um, before it makes a decision is whether it will require a sidewalk uh, on the side of Church Street or not. Uh, and the other thing is just in looking at the plan, and I don't know how easy it would be uh, to create some kind of pedestrian connection in some way to let the residents or other people using the site to walk to Church Street um, rather than going to the bushes. There may be a spot in the, in the corner up here, um, just whether it's a, some kind of a path or flagstones or something that, that you know, makes it more of a formal way to walk around Church Street and then downtown so that the you know, gets the increased connectivity. But the sidewalk is on the opposite side, so that's part of the same, same discussion. Okay. Uh, Ada? Joe, do you have any other comments you want to leave with? Um, no, I think uh, I, I, I think pedestrian access, emergency access around the parking lot, via vehicles. Uh, I want them to consider additional options for that train outlet, possibly reusing. And obviously, some details for Green Garden. Okay. I, as I think most of your engineers have worked with our engineer, yes. we encourage that in between sessions. And if you get back a clean comment letter from them, 
all this to it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. Most of us don't quite understand all the rain gardens as well as we might should be, but we defer to our, our experts in that area. But, um, we are very shortly running out of time for today, and what I'd like to do is add quickly to the outline, and we'll do this more detailed with the next time, but I wanted you to be able to get a little prepared for a couple other items to the outline. This would be under item five. As Elaine said, the Church Street sidewalk, pedestrian connection to Church Street, design review comments, and then just the ZBA decision just to handle. I think that just kind of fills out the normal stuff that we do with traffic and the parking lot design, et cetera. I think we've got everything else covered in the thing that's kind of going we'll, we'll open that up and start with that item on the next one. But uh, if anything from the planning board, because we are starting to eat into our, our next uh, couple of appearances tonight. Uh, as far as scheduling, we, we had a very brief discussion Joe about the, making sure exactly what you said happens as far as getting comments back, plan revisions, getting them digested, and getting you, if not a clean letter, certainly a substantive letter so we can move it forward. Um, we would ask for October 5th. What time October 7th. 7th. That's okay. 7th. 7th. October 5th. And uh, we'll probably at least schedule the can in a couple hours at least to get going. So we can for a motion to continue the public hearing until the 5th of October. So we we'll Second. We can second for the discussion. And I vote aye. Aye. And the motion carries. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.
to go back and around the eastern side of the pond so that ultimately when this is um, you know, park, parkland use and, and presumably a marathon center too, uh, they'll have a, a more scenic sort of vista uh, of the pond and the sort of stream system here. So we, we happily did that to accommodate them. We've also introduced a, a, a band of uh, what would be 50 foot wide uh, evergreen buffer zone uh, in between here. There's already a, a very significant uh, vegetative buffer or tree mixed deciduous evergreen buffer between the road and here. And you can't actually see from the road into the site, but uh, just as a precaution, we're going to be planting uh, and, and uh, you know, evergreens in, in that area, which is basically from here all along here. And that will be maintained during the lifetime of the project as well. And that's also in the conditions uh, of the, uh, that you have there. And we'll have to maintain it in good health. Um, so those are the sort of major physical uh, changes. Uh, the, the other thing that you may or may not have heard, I guess, is the Conservation Commission did approve the project fully uh, sometime in late August or <laughs> at this point. And uh, so that, that's, that's, that was a huge step in the process as well. So uh, we're grateful to everybody for their cooperation. And I think uh, I'll let you uh, uh, ask us any questions that you have. And, and Eric is here as well from the Parks and Rec Commission. Questions to the board members? Uh, I, I Mr. Chairman, uh, and this might be directed toward one of the members who parks and rec is here. Uh, what changes occurred or what was agreed to specifically uh, with parks and rec? Is that something that's going to be documented? That's going to be sure. Um, thanks for asking. It, it's actually reflected in several of the conditions here, but I can point Some to the ones that, that, yeah. <laughs> that are sort of most important. Um, You'll see there's an $80,000 uh, allotment for future uh, screening of any buildings that will be built on the Parks and Rec site or the Marathon Center there uh, uh, next to next to or near the solar. Um, and so that's to be used at, at Parks and Rec's discretion to, to create adequate screening. There's also um, uh, the, the, the movement of the Pedro that I just mentioned and the Evergreen Buffer mentioned. And then, in addition to that, uh, there's a, the last condition on the list, number 21, I believe it is, just gives the uh, par Parks and Rec an opportunity to come back out, visit the site, and make sure that the screening is adequate. Um, you know, if there's some additional shrubs or trees that need to be added, then uh, there's a, a sort of a chance to, uh, you know, update that. So those are, I think, literally everything that was. Can you think of anything else there? Well, let me just say that since our last meeting, Parks and Rec asked Foreman Richardson, specifically Scott Richardson, to work with the uh, Rick and his people to come up with a topographical view of the site, how it would look from a Parks and Rec standpoint, and what would be necessary if a museum for the marathon were built there. Essentially, Scott made many recommendations, not the least of which was the way the hedgerow goes around the pond and what have you. And uh, Rick and his people literally agreed and incorporated every recommendation that Scott had. That took us to the uh, area of what if it isn't good enough? And we added two things. The, you remember at the inception, uh, $15,000 was to be allocated to uh, make up for any deficiencies. Well, that's grown since the last meeting to 80000 And uh, uh, we feel that at this point that's adequate. We also wanted to block it six months after the uh, completion of the project. And if that were in the middle of February, we would delayed until the following spring or whenever we could get a good look at it. The, uh, we're very uh, pleased with the uh, cooperation we've had with Rick and his people. And uh, as he said, Parks and Rec last night voted unanimously, uh, assuming that you incorporate all of the, uh, the five or six conditions we have, that we support the project. Could I just add, Mr. Asana, it's saying 80000 Our memo says 50000 No, it's 
There's a new one right in front of you there. All right. Okay. So what is it? We've got a few other changes. <laughs> well, we, we improved a 25-foot uh, buffer zone to 50 feet. Um, you know, but the, the key here is that Scott Richardson's uh, recommendations were totally incorporated. And there's enough uh, flexibility that if it doesn't do the job, we can address it. So based on that, we move on. I appreciate Stein. Thank you. Parks and Rec. One other follow up question, Mr. Chairman. Was there anything from the Board of Selectmen? I recall. I think we're going to have some more discussion this, this, this evening later on. Uh, the word that I was hearing from them informally was that the Parks and Rec was happy and they're okay. They've invited me to their meeting and I'm going to tell them what I just told them. So Thanks once again, Greg. It, uh, and I noticed in the terms and conditions have been revised. Uh, players concern about the uh, bond is back into the final version. We've been talking, I guess, the last couple of meetings about terms and conditions. Does anyone have other questions from the board before I open it up to the public on this issue? Okay, is there any public comment on terms and conditions for the solar project at this point? We've been kind of going through it for a long time now, I guess. Jane? I apologize for being late to this uh, whole process. I'm a neighbor and interested in probably my question might be to Parks and Rec as well. Um, being a member of the infrastructure committee and a frequent visitor to the existing properties. I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, trails have been considered and pathways and usability well, we, after we, we've always, shrubbery and all We've that, always, you know. always considered them on the town side of the line. Mm -hmm. You know, this is solely on, on uh, Roger's side of the line and we did not about. And one quick question. Uh, okay, so um, I guess that has Essentially, the trail going would to be on the town property and go north into the Legacy Farms property and sort of skirt around. Sure. And that's, I think that's already been engineered. Okay. The place. only other thing that we talked briefly about potentially was why working with Roger to try to continue the East Main Street sidewalk all the way over to uh, Legacy Farms. Road. That would be wonderful. And then, secondly, um, the fencing around the solar property. You, where is that fencing going to start? Just yeah, like a picture. Why don't you, why don't you just show it for, yeah, um, for, for Jane on, on the map where the fencing is real quick? It's a little hard to see, but um, this is this is regular Main Street. I think you're across the street. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this is the access road. There'll be no fencing around the access road. Okay. Um, the fencing is actually way up in here. I don't know what kind of access you might need, but there's certainly, there are some paths that go here mm -hmm. and ways around, and, and there's probably some ways around this way as well. Uh, Thank you. That's, there should that's be ample wonderful. space to, to get around. Yeah. And, um, just for my two sons, um, you know, my neighbor has always been wonderful and very generous. <laughs> Super, I can ask her about a neighbor. And I think of all of the projects that could have gone in over there, Seeing none, um, I think we are just about to find my notes. Ready to take some votes? Uh, I, I wanted to know if Frank could watch the
criteria 1 through 4 had been met. 1 through 4 are in, in Wayne's memo. Uh, refers to our bylaw, uh, not to be detrimental to the neighborhood of the town, environmental features of the site surrounding areas is protected. And granted uh, the will be priority with the general purposes and intent of the bylaw. So we need one motion for that, and then we can vote to approve as the second motion. So, so moved. Second. Second. So this is the vote on the finding of the approval criteria one to four has been met. Further discussion? Seeing none, I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And we abstain, motion carries. Okay, the second vote we need to is to approve uh, with conditions. And the conditions that we're talking about are in the Lynn's memo of tonight, which are 1 through 21. And Rick, you've seen all those? Okay. And you're nodding yes? Okay. Okay. Um, so, we're looking for a motion to approve with these so moved. Second. Moved seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, you're ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 opposed? And we abstain. Motion carries. So that's the first of the two permits. Um, second. One has to do with the stormwater permit. And there was ten standards that we heard from Beta that they all met. And basically, I think we only need one vote, which is that the vote that the approved plan meets the standards in Section 7 and approve with conditions for the stormwater permit. And there are in the Lane's memo conditions one through eight. This is on page 11, 12, 13. Okay. Okay, the motion to approve the meets the standards and approve with the conditions so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, I think you're ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. I think that is it. I think you you crossed the line. <laughs> thank you. It all starts here, but sometimes we don't finish here. <laughs> I just wanted to thank everybody for that, you know, your cooperation and we really appreciate it. It's been great work. We look forward to a long term relationship. Thanks for so much. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh. Move to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Roger. Roger. Close the hearing. Stay motion here. Okay. So we are it's getting to be right out of time, but let's take. Uh, we have a couple more minutes before the library. Let's take 203 Pond Street. I think, uh, come on down to Dimitri, right? Yes. Yep. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, board members. Dimitri Deitch, uh, president of Diamond Builders, also a general contractor at uh, 203 Pond Street, uh, subdivision also known as uh, Fox Hollow. One year ago, uh, this month actually, last year, the project was approved for a 12 parcel of the 12 single family home uh, subdivision. The project went through a 61A and was uh, finally uh, started uh, in uh, late May of this past year. Uh, we ran into a slight delay uh, based on the approved plan uh, with the DPW, the Department of uh, Highway 
uh, with the water main that was approved. And uh, if, if most of you remember, there's a culvert crossing uh, that's uh, approved on uh, Fox Hollow Road, and the way the water main was designed uh, was caught later on by the Department of uh, Public Works uh, that it was placed below the culvert, and uh, they just, they opposed it. So we went through several revisions of so, uh, a couple months, but we are at it now. Uh, the road has been, if those of you who have driven by, the road has been clear cut. Uh, there's and the cut and fill is more or less complete. We do have some blasting happening going there now, but uh, most of the drainage now at this point has been installed, and we are working on the water main, which has already been tapped by the town. Uh, with the slight delay, it looks like we're going to be uh, at position of laying down preliminary binder, asphalt binder on the road sometime in late October to early November of this year. Uh, I am here before you today asking for relief uh, for uh, the opportunity to uh, to start construction on one model home uh, prior to generally, based on the bylaw, uh, the, uh, the base of the must be laid down to define some sort of a road completion condition before any permits are released uh, for any single family homes to be constructed on the new road. Uh, I am here to ask for relief for the opportunity to, to start construction of one model single family home and the opportunity to install uh, two foundations only, so foundation only permits uh, for two other parcels uh, on that road as well. And that's uh, strictly uh, looking down uh, looking down the barrel of uh, winter approaching uh, quickly, just looking to do the, uh, uh, the heavy leg work, the, the, the work that's generally opposed in that time frame. It's a little bit more challenging in that time frame. Looking to just get a head start on that right now. That's it. Anybody have any questions? Anybody? It's generally been the preference of the town that uh, building permits are issued for, for homes when the binder is in place, when there's access for emergency vehicles and so forth in the site that isn't dirt, potentially muddy, and can be plowed, and, and so forth. And so that's why um, it's the preference of the town for there to be binder. Um, the lots could be released without it, but the performance guarantee has to reflect the amount of remaining work, so it will be quite high. If somebody puts up the monetary bond, um, that obviously has more work involved, including the removal of the house that's there um, and construction of the remaining part of the road. So I'm not sure exactly what you're asking for other than the model home. The board cannot release lots without, uh, from the conditional approval agreement without varying the form of surety. So there needs to be some monetary provided if you're releasing lots and the work is not complete. So there has to be some some monetary um, consideration. It, but it could be just, as, it could be maybe the, the, the soonest lot, the lot that's closest to Pond Street, and perhaps, you know, it's done in phases, and perhaps that's where it's bonded first. Lot that is Pond Street before or after the bridge? They're all after the bridge. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, I drove the, the site today, and I remember one developer saying that in order to make an omelet, you've got to break some eggs. We've got some legacy farms discussion. And right now, it's a lot of broken eggs. I mean, there's a lot of work to get it, I think, to a binder area, whatever. I'm not so sure I feel terribly comfortable with it. It's besides the house, I mean it's cleared and there's some stuff there, but there's you know, there's no bridge, there's no it's there's a lot of stuff there. I mean you are working on the two houses that the front pond streets and you know, it's you you started off, I assume you've sold those off. I mean you know, I don't know. I, what you normally do. Claire? I mean, I haven't heard this model home requests before. I was worried about precedent. And every new development coming in, you're going to want a model home, and then I'm going to want to have to do the, prep, the preparation and the performance stuff that guarantees to the town that if the worst case happens, then 
you know, the thing doesn't get built, the town's not stuck with it. Um, I, I don't understand all the details involved, but I can understand maybe not having to bond the entire, you know, pay for the entire roadway, but I would certainly think that whatever is required to provide adequate access to the home model or whatever that's built, that should not, that that should be provided because if something happens and, and it's just the house and the foundation and the road doesn't get built, again, the, the town's going to, someone's going to be responsible for building that. So I, I don't want to set a precedent. Um, I, I could see doing something partial to accommodate the need, but... Um, we have a pretty partial line for, for call this act. You know, you would have to get beyond the bridge. Uh, you do a phase of bridge. You do a phase, you know, you don't have to basically take all the way out again. But we, we've done that in the past. I think we've included an amount where the other call this act in, I'll say less than that. But from what I understand, our member of purchase and sale, Mr. Town says, you know, Mr. Coolidge owns a lot of the lot still. Same, same purchase and sale that went to the town. So you know, there's what you know what the security or you know, from that is it's a little, a little less. But that's just my you know everyone else chime in. Please. I agree with Claire. I mean, I think that you know if you're going to put a home, call it a model home, um, it, you need to have you know this the infrastructure, you know, to get there just for the safety. So we can get emergency vehicles to it if need be. When, when is Mr. Coolidge going to leave the house? Uh, he's planning on uh, on or before Thanksgiving. So we've actually created much of what you see is actually is not a distress situation with lots of you know, scrambled eggs. It's, it's actually a uh, uh, we've actually created a somewhat an island for, for his home and his well to basically function and still maintain occupancy on the home and doing our best to work around him. So we literally have heavy machinery on the left side of his house and the right side of his house. And unfortunately, until he he moves, we cannot uh, we cannot complete uh, the road working from the cul-de-sac out. Uh, Strictly, strictly for that reason, the home is, is a partial to the to, to the final condition of the road. So you're kind of on hold. Right? Well, theoretically, There's yes. There's a lot of work. It's, it's still going on. <laughs> I mean, it's. Right. What about foundation only permits? There's no physical structure created other than the concrete, uh, and again, just for winter conditions, just to. Continue the excavation that's that's continuing uh, there, and we would just leave it at that until the binder is fully fully down. Well, a foundation permit is a building permit, and so the covenant prevents the issuance of foundation permits because it's a building permit unless the board releases the lot. Okay. I'm, I'm sympathetic to your needs, but we need to protect the town, and I don't want to see this model home thing continue to come to the board. We did come out of home situation that way, far as I thought. And then, um, no, we have to go to the trailer. That's like a sales model of their office. No, we have the yeah. trailer. That's a condominium. But the, the, road, was bonded. Off. the road was bonded. But, but the roads were all in place before uh, before they started building any the foundation. I agree with what Sarah what said about the whole thing, though. And I, know, and I think if we do have foundation, it's a kind of risk with our own growing up. And they started building houses and then they stopped. And then we were, we were a kid running a company, you know, running foundations. It's kind of a risk. I don't like the idea. I wouldn't want to buy a house with a foundation and fill up the lights and water all the way for the year. Okay. I think you got your answer for us. So let's keep, uh, keep working on it on your own. Open the uh, continued public hearing for 13 Main Street and 9 Church Street. This is site plan review and an application for an off site uh, 
parking pieces for the town of Hawkington and the City Public Library. Unless you want to do one minute for me, and our plan is to do this week. Okay. Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll get the A and R plan first. Oh, this is the three and five bridle path. Yes. Yeah. So we're filing in. Explain it quickly, and then uh, we'll ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the board. It's um, I look for you to change the lot lines between lot number two and lot number three on bridle path. It requires the. Uh, the swapping of about 140 square feet, equal parcels, from one to the other to create an easier access to the driveway. Into the Meets all the requirements. Okay. Any questions? Maybe it would be this parcel here from lot number two in exchange for this parcel here. Square and away. The common driver comes down here and requires me to use your access into lot number three is also eliminated. We have right now the easement on lot number one for the short access to that. Lot uh, number three is built in the Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 motion to approve. So we'll make our motion to sign it. Motion to sign it. Second. Second. Move to be seconded. Ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any other abstaining motion here? Again, you need two signatures on the date. Mm -hmm.
Why don't we start Dan with talking about? Yeah, I, we, we've had uh, our consulting engineer talk with your engineer to go over the the technical issues. But I think if we can get that stuff out of the way, it makes them very cut and dry. Yeah. And on that. So if you want to, you want to just go sure. with that, Jim, and then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the record. Uh, Jim DeVellis, I'm a professional civil engineer with DeVellis. Um, so we were here about a month ago, and following that, um, we, heard the, we got, received the comments from Beta, resubmitted a uh, full set of claims, got some um, more comments last week, or beginning of this week, on some of the uh, technical stuff that needed more clarification. So I think we're at the point now, I just, I'll just explain some of the substantive changes. One second. Elaine, did we get formally a copy of this set of plans? Because I didn't see any of that. Can you see some of the today? Today. Okay, so none of the board members have seen the latest version of the plans, which is a problem. And, you know, we need to work on getting this. Well, let's, 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 go, let's go over the changes. We'll get, we'll get the changes, sure. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Looks like you had them well in time to get them here. And somebody, I don't know who from the town is, whether it's your committee or some town official, but we need to get stuff in a timely manner so that a lot of us can read it over the weekend. Okay. When we were looking at fireworks and parades. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go over it. Sure. See how complicated it really is. So um, this is similar to the colored render that you saw uh, at the last meeting. Um, and so this is the set, and I can pull it up with additional detail. But uh, basically some of the changes that you'll see looking down uh, in the comments stuck from this way back. This entire sidewalk now is going to be replaced before we had different pieces going in and out. One of the comments was, um, you know, take a look at all the, the broken sidewalks. So that's new. We updated this area here where um, that that landing and handicap accessibility needs to be worked on. Um, the last plan had, we were fighting grades between to get from here down to here and then up to these different platforms at 5% or less. So there's no ramp, uh, ramps and railings uh, put to the historic commission. So we took this and moved it up to here, which the historic commission saw. So this is, this is new. The landscaping's all new. Um, Mostly shrubs, and, and as you go through the walkway, uh, the ramps, the historic commission is happy. With it should say ramp walkways. Walkway, yes. they're, they're now happy. I think this goes back um, to what they initially saw. Close. I'm on the district commission. Can you just clarify? Is that plan that we that the district commission approved in your certificate in June? Or are you saying it's been a change? This uh, okay. fellow Brian and Johnson Roberts Associates. I was at the. Uh, the historic district commission. What we showed the historic district commission was a triple switch back stair that also picked up. Uh, I'm sorry, walkway that also picked up the exit from the from the old church. Right. It's essentially, this thing does the same. Um, it, the difference between what what you're seeing tonight uh, and what you saw last time was a section of of the walkway that came over onto the opposite side of our stairway, uh, and we've eliminated that. And so this is very similar to what what the HTC saw. But it's not what the HDC approved in this It's this change. The engineering is a little bit different in order to make those grades work. That's right. I'm not saying that that's going to be a problem. I'm just saying that what's what's in the certificate that this commission approved is what either needs to be built or else they need to go back and get the change approved. And it may be a fine change, but um, a change can't just get built without the district. This is not a substantive change over what was what was shown right. and approved by the board. But um, it is a change from what was approved. I can, I can go back and, and double check what the differences are. You can certainly make that noise. Claire, does this trigger some relook at design review board? Um, the design review didn't really do too much with it. They pretty much deferred to the district commission because it requires certification from the district commission. Okay. But it certainly does require the district to at least take a look at it. Um, it gets a change from what was approved in the June, 30, uh, June 18th hearing. Okay. small, but, you know. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, uh, moving up here, the bike rack. Uh, 
which was over here, I'm sorry, the old library over here, I made provisions for a bike rack. The parking, number of spaces, fencing, landscaping all stayed the same. This was a tree that the tree warden commented on that um, is worth saving. Uh, we had shown it saving, but that's, and then there was a couple stumps over here that we thought could save and the rest of the stuff, so. Um, some comments on the landscaping, on the type and, and the durability, so we, we changed those out, but the number stayed the same. Um, things that you don't see on this plan, like erosion sediment control plan, initially we did not do one because it's such a site tight, tight site, and with all the construction <coughs> around there, we put silt sacks in the catch basins, but uh, Beta had asked to have one, so we provided that. Um, probably the, the change, as you can see, in great gray area, in this area, that's the existing house that's there now. So we did test pits right along the side. They yielded good soil results, fast soils. The overlaying soil in this area is a poor soil. So the comments that we received back from Bay was even though we show a perk test for the fast rate, the rest of the soils is poor. So when we look at um, increasing the system to accommodate the actual soils that are up there. So as up, up until this afternoon, we re-ran the numbers with the Cornell method with a slower soil and then email that back to beta this afternoon. It requires some additional piping still within this area, no extra structure. So um, that's a detail that's not on that plan but will be accommodated um, uh, going forward. And then the beta, when we responded back to beta, they sent comments back and I think everything was addressed except for if I just pulled out uh, some stuff. There's a sign here existing sign, it's in an area where it can remain. It's, it's not like a small detail, but we're not proposing to move it. So if the town wants to move it, we'd have to come back to the planning board or something like that as a comment. Um, there's a subdivision line that comes down through to separate it. There's a question of, uh, has that been subdivided? The project most likely will subdivide it after um, with the Form A, um, asking for additional um, Oh, because we're going to be combining, combining, combining into one big lot, yeah. Um, um, the off-street parking, some further um, discussion on that or some information on where the off-street parking is going to go. Um, clarification that the pipes are going to be HDPD, I'll put that on the plans that are on concrete pipes. Um, still requesting some erosion control, some hay bales around here, which we can certainly do if that's where we're going with it. Um, and then some additional notes for the public safety measures during construction. So there's nothing, and Beta has been very good to work with, very accommodating. Um, we spent a lot of time trying to re-engineer this, so we didn't get comments until the middle of the last week. So they were very responsive. It's just between August, the redesign and getting it back, um, we struggled a little bit. So um, I, can, I can safely say that the comments that we received from Beta can all be Addressed on the plan, and I consider them pretty much details that are left at this point. Yes, I mean, if you look through the third letter that we've all gotten in front of us today, most of them say the issue resolved. And that's what we're happy with the right here. Yeah. Claire? Um, can you just clarify? You said something about some change for handicap access being made in that bottom corner, the corner on Church Street and Main. Um, where there's the old granite wall. What, what did you mean by that? Yeah, it's not, it's the exact, it's sitting over the existing sidewalk. If you come down here, we're just basically <coughs> making this conform with handicapped accessible so someone can get from the curb up in both directions in apex. Beyond you know, the street, from the street to the side. Yeah, nothing to do with walls. This is so, okay, this is so the existing sidewalk. So the yellow, yellow replacing it with a... Okay, so you're not breaking through the granite wall? No, no, no. Like no, that. no. That's not the no, no, no. Okay. That's what we okay. actually wanted to do that. We kind of responded to beta thing, but it's kind of that, the the place in the library is probably going to have to pick up the town sidewalk, the entire town right. sidewalk. No, it really, I'm just it really should be a DPW issue. Well, well, you know, Dan, I, I'm not so sure that you necessarily have to do the Main Street sidewalk, in my right. opinion, because yeah. within a couple of years, I mean, unless it's truly unsafe, but they're going to be relaying out that whole curb and the whole no, part of the we're Main Street gonna project. Destroy, we're probably going to destroy the Church Street <coughs> sidewalk during construction. Yes. Um, You've got water and sewer okay. coming out yeah. there. And but the, the rebuilding the Main Street sidewalk and <coughs> trying to make that into a handicap accessible, 
So I'm not sure what it what it might have to be like <coughs> The library has a limited budget where, where the town has a bit more money than the library project. So, would that be, be that sort of thing? You know, if, if you might, you might want to do the corner with the handicapped party for this. Not, not a bad idea. Particularly, right now your application talks about uh, off-site parking across the street. And I just want to get there. Basically, uh, all doors that, that enable a person can get in and out. Handicapped people need to get in and out, even though it's not the main door. So, uh, well, I think maybe the answer is that the main street door is used if you just want to use the auditorium as a standalone from the rest of the library. I you want to use the meeting room. We don't have that. We just remodeled the uh, town hall. We don't have that here. Um, a lot of schools don't have every door that's like that, so I'm kind of confused by that. So. Can I answer yeah, that question? Sure. Philip Ryan again. Um, the handicap code has different requirements for existing buildings that you're renovating uh, and new buildings, and it depends when you have an existing building, how much work you're doing inside the building. We are over the limit in this building, and so we need to do full compliance with the handicap code um, and the building code. And what that means is all entrances, as Jim has said, that are accessible to the public need to be accessible to all. So we have an entrance uh, that we're using along the side, Church Street, obviously, that, that serves the, the neighborhood in this area and, and the parking lot. Um, the one in the front serves the main street, acts also as the ceremonial entrance, but that's also the entrance that's used um, when the rest of the building is closed and folks need to get in and access the meeting room in the evening. Um, and if that's the only part of the building that's open, um, we don't have the capability of getting folks into the handicapped entrance, even if it was possible to go on, on, on one side and then getting them into the secure part of the library. So, so I, I understand that it's a, an engineering legal requirement, but at this point in the project, uh, it's like putting a cart after on a horse. You, you, plan, you guys planned it this way, and and the whole reason, okay, this is a nice entrance, we've got Church Street, and then all the other changes you're making now require that you do additional changes and make it more expensive. So I'm kind of wondering, is, is the whole project kind of out of scope a little bit more than No, we're not. We, we've always had, the project's always had handicap access on Club and Church Street. Right. That was a big thing that we wanted and needed was handicap access instead of the, the way it is now coming from the back. And it would be a nice big entrance on Church Street, like, like it is. But I'm just kind of confused now at the 11th hour that now this additional changes have to be made at additional additional <coughs> cost that we're, we're and the, that the only change we're making is at the corner and we're just responding to a beta yeah. comment on it. It's not it's something that we're sidewalk. proposing. It's just a it's just the existing sidewalk. sidewalk to make it handicapped accessible. Not not for replacing the corner. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure to be honest with you, beta specific group on route that just doesn't conform to bring in sewer water, all these changes, it's just the corner. But my was point is that you know, people concerned that maybe the project's a little bit out of scope, a little bit too big, trying to bring it in, and now we're hearing right here, right now, that we're doing so many changes that we're triggering another requirement that's going to cost extra money, and it's like, no, how do we get this point without getting, how do we get this point instead of knowing at the beginning that we're going to be here, so. We absolutely here. knew it, we knew at the beginning that we would need to be full compliance. But we didn't know until Beta said that we needed to do this. No, 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 the only the only thing Beta brought up was the existing sidewalk, not nothing to do with the project or the building. <coughs> this is essentially what we're talking about: is a curb yeah. cut on the curb right. sidewalk. I'm talking about the entrance way with the zigzag and front. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. 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 It's been part of the plan for okay. yeah. six, eight months. So it's been figuring out where to put it exactly. We, we, we're just trying to get the grades just right so we can avoid the handrail issue. It's, it's both an aesthetic issue to avoid the handrails. Uh, it's a comfort issue because a, a walkway that's less steep is easier to walk. Um, 
it, it's a maintenance issue. Uh, you don't have to manage and paint and take care of all the railings and everything. And um, it, it, it's cost issue because it's cheaper to put in the walks than it is to put in the house. Um, so it, it works for a variety of reasons. To do this. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate your insight. Sure. Okay. I think we are on the detailed outline, which is detailed discussion by both the planning board and the public. I think we were finishing up pedestrian traffic flow pretty much, I think the last time, if I remember correctly. Probably the problem, right? And uh, I think we're running out of time right now in pedestrian traffic flow, but if there's any further comments on that, I think if I remember right, we heard about the entranceways and where people are coming. Yeah, I think we just kind of talked about that, how we're getting in and out of the building. Yeah, so I think yeah. we're there, and let's have more comments on that. I would say the next item on the thing is a uh, interesting one of my questions is, is, is outside curb or book return. Do you have a, uh, how, how do you return a book when the library is closed? When did we end up with that, Phil? Uh, book return is actually uh, on the, here next to the door. So if you, if you park along the street or, um, or if you park in the parking lot, you can walk up, take the stairs up to this point. Uh, and then it, the drop is exterior uh, and drops into the building close to the, the office. And I guess because we're not going one way, we can't do a curbside one. If you had a curbside book return, I'd give you a couple of spots for that, <laughs> quite frankly. Because, you know, us um, old people just like to drop it right off the driver's side door, you know. And, you know I've seen it done in a lot of different places. Is, is there, I can't remember, on, on the back of the building up against the new parking lot, is there any access, there's an access door into the building, isn't there there for staff or something? It's very on the exit, no entrance. Right, 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 I know, but is that something that staff can access? I, I just wondered if, I think the intent was either someone. Where I'm getting back. is, could you um, put a book drop back by that door where a car could just pull into the parking lot and didn't have to try to find a parking place or anything, could just idle for a minute, jump out in the parking lot, run and drop in the book drop, and it was near the door so a staff person from the inside can come out and access the book box rather than now where you've got it, somebody's going to have to find a parking place, go around. You know, I'm just looking for a park the car and idle and drop it kind of thing. Similar to Westboro Library. Yeah, just something in the back. You can get anywhere in that part. You can even just park in the I, I, think, I think you get into more trouble. It's kind of like a post office with the, with the drop in box that wasn't thought up really well when they. Well, I wasn't talking were, about driving around. I was talking about being able to just hop out of the car and run up to the book drop and get back in the car rather than having to. I'm not sure this parking lot is conduct, conducive to you know, going it, in and dropping books. It's, it's, it's similar to Westboro, where, except it's not a police station, I was having where they have that amount of space and idle for a few minutes, it's a few feet as opposed to yeah. a lot of Not a full parking yeah. space, just you know, stop for a second and drive it quick instead of, it's just in the ball. Any one member from the comments? Yeah, I'm really sure I had to respond. But yeah, I'm just trying to think. Any members of the public have comments yeah. on, on yeah. book returns? Okay, I think we're ready to move on. Next one is parking. On street, off street, off site. Uh, how, how's the negotiations going with the church? Not into the details of that, but is that still being pursued by the town? Uh, I'm not sure if anything happened in the last few weeks uh, with that. That's, that's at the, at the town manager's level, so I'm not sure if we're, uh, where that really stands. That makes it, in my mind, a lot easier to deal with that as opposed to all the questions I'm going to have to you about this back parking lot being able to accommodate additional uses, like such as the auditorium use. Because as we know, everyone that went here tonight had a hard time finding a spot. If you had 100 people in an auditorium across the street, and you said this was the parking for it, it doesn't work. That's my opinion. 
The application isn't requesting just from parking lot on the town owned space. Yeah, the town owns four spots out here or whatever. Right. The amount of spaces and, and that are short there. 20 something, or at least. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's, you know, as an area to point out, there's between 35 and 40 on street spaces in addition to the 24. Not, the not that you can count on this project. Plenty board rules. We just said that the narrative for the site for the special permit was between Hayden Row and, and uh, Walcott Street. There's about 40 on street spaces. And, and those are counted by every business that's, that's up and down the line. David? I mean, what just that was the, the, the application itself did not, you know, request, you know, use of the existing shared parking area. I thought that, uh, that was in our packet, if I remember right. Wasn't that included? It, it's it a was. consideration. It was just considered a consideration to provide information to the planning board that there's an existing lot of you know, shared parking between the town and those pizza for that space. Should the discussion go in that direction, I provided that, that information to them. Just as a, you know, what if? If the planning board, again, the, the request was determining parking requirements based on the zone, they had you know, some comments on place of assembly, first museum, um, the narrative was requesting nineteen spaces. The application requested from the planning board that those nineteen spaces be met with seven behind town hall, town hall spaces, and spaces between Hayden Rail, Walcott Street, and Church Street, for on street parking. We're looking for 10 on street parking. The nine here, and we've got 23 on site? 21 on site. But our rules allow you to count the ones in front of your spot. You don't get any on Church Street because it's not one way. You get, you get the four or five on Main Street, and that's about it. I mean, and, and to, to count the ones that are behind here, I've never seen those four unless I come at some odd hour a day. There's usually a town, a car with a town seal in one or two of them. One of them's a handicapped spot. Uh, you know, I, maybe I, I don't want to end this today on, on, on parking, but I think the town has to do something to create the more parking and you know the church is a viable one in, in my opinion as, as one that has a shared parking that is in a convenient area that you know you could you could go to. I'm personally am not terribly worried about parking for the library and maybe I could be like, we're better off than we were on the library uses, but the auditorium uses which I can see is a value, you know, is going to be very popular. Um, are you in your cat parking calculations counting the spaces around the common at all? Because there's quite a bit of that's not far. I mean that's like a block up. I mean there there's one what, one building? between the library and the common. And you've got a lot of spaces around the common. And honestly, I've always thought that on that marathon wayside, if you change those to diagonal, you could get quite a few more. I mean, I don't well, think that's what, walking Well, that's why we were thinking it, it the common really wasn't a big it. issue because we've got, we've got the library there now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're creating a parking lot that going from three or four spaces to a uniform 24 spaces. So again, quite a bit there, and, and the spacing, whether it's in front of the library or at the common, people are going to find a spot on Main Street that they really need to, to get to the library, well, just as they do today. But in, in fairness, you've got businesses that are trying to They're operate there today. I understand, but it's, you know, with the, the conditions to make it so that it wouldn't be intractable for me is, is you're going to have to 
condition it, that you're not doing it during a school function or during the school day? Because the common ones are... are common packs. It's a cop. There, there, there is not a, no, not a place no, to park. For evening, evening well, yeah, but, evening but evening basically, I'm, I'm talking about spending a lot of time writing a list of, of rules as to when you can use the auditorium. But not on a day of selectmen's meeting, not on a day of planning board meeting, not on a ZBA meeting. I mean, the, bulk, the, bulk, the bulk of that is going to be like a children's story hour or something that happens during the day today, and people find a way to do it when there's no parking lot at all. At the, at the library. Yeah, but you don't have a hundred seat place today. I mean, you, you, you've got you've got a, a building that we said, you know, if you build it, they're going to come for the rest of the library. I mean, I've heard that, and, and I truly believe that. Uh, and, you know, in our parking requirements, only require you to provide half the number of parking spots that all the calculations say you're going to need. So we're giving you half, quite frankly, because that's what, what the, the bylaw says. I mean, we need more shared parking. I mean, you're going to say, well, you know, we're going to park at the church. Well, maybe the church will put up the, 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 the Hopkinton drug sign that says you can't park there if you're, if you're going to Yoder Beach. Uh, you know, you can't park there if you're going to the library. Uh, you know. Okay. I think having a hundred assembly area the capacity is for an assembly area changes the dynamic of the discussion more than just the library. It's much broader in terms of the expanse and how to address that. Will they find a place to park? Maybe eventually. But, but I want to go to something if I have to park halfway up Ash or park the other way. I don't know. So something, I think it's just a question of concern. If you're going to have to some degree, but it doesn't sound like I, I'm just wondering if in the time that's going to be involved for the library to get built and then the decommissioning of Central School and there will if it's not next door but it's in the same neighborhood, that would potentially open up parking a larger parking lot in back, which you know, I think it's not you know nearby, but it is within you know, and then the library's not gonna happen tomorrow. No, but the library will be there well before center schools. Yeah. I mean, but it's, and I'll tell you, no, very few people would want to park behind center school and, and walk all the way up there. I mean, you got a better shot of, of turning down Church Street. Whoops, this parking lot is full, and I'll pull into the into the into the, into the Catholic Church parking lot. Well, this board permitted ZOs at 15 Main to get some of their parking covered in Colella's parking lot, and nobody ever dreamed that someone was really going to park in Colella's in order to go to 15 Main, but that was in the shared parking agreement. So well, probably I mean, nobody did, and that's kind of the... Yeah, but it was well, on paper. I, I'm just thinking longer range, some of this may sort itself out when the different... Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. Range. And I think a, a library is different than a restaurant. I mean, people people come to the library because they have it used and need to get there. If, if they go out to eat and the parking lot's full, they're going to go to the next restaurant. They're not going to go to the next which, library. Which, which, are you going to put the, uh, the guy out, the tie put guy out of business? With that discussion? No. I mean, no. Yeah. In fact, no, in fact, no, you'll give him more business. In fact, uh, when, when mm -hmm. we close the library at 5 o'clock, I'm sure some of his customers are going to park in our parking lot. Okay. Unless, so. unless you have the auditorium for Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Scott has a good point, if I may. Yeah. I go to the library all the time, and, and if I do go to other places when I come to the library, and you know, sometimes I'll go to one place or another to get you know, food. And, um, I am going to one, more than one place, so Scott's point that it's going to increase business the more people are coming out now, which is the whole idea of it, and I think it's a very good one and very valid. And, uh, it, we are taking a risk. There could be a perfect storm. There could be Stephen King's being at the library. There could be a big discussion in Selectman. There could be a Mason's meeting that's, you know, and, and parking is, is a problem, and yeah. it's, a, it's something we need to address. I agree with Ken very much, but. I don't know how we can address it in this discussion because there is no answer. 
Um, there's there a physical no, there are, answer. There are answers. Okay. Make the deal with the church. That's in process. So we don't we don't have that in hand. Well, we're not done with the hearings yet either. I mean, that's that's the discussion. Is you know, it's time to go make make a deal. Make a deal with bills. You know, make a deal where it's practical where we're going to provide it. People won't come to the library if they got to walk three blocks in the rain to come to something either. What about clothes parking lot? Mr. Chairman, I think um, I think I understand the rules and regulations. I deal with them a lot. Um, uh, Claire, you make a very good point. We have ample parking for this library within adequate and un not unreasonable walking distance around the common, everywhere. I mean, if, if in fact you had Stephen King here, you have a public hearing here, people had to walk a little further, actually there'd be something happening in town, but that'd be great. I don't think you would ever have a parking problem with what we're doing, whether we have an agreement with the church or not. That aside, we are actually talking with uh, Crosspoint mm -hmm. to also see if we can work in agreement with that. Well, okay, having a piece of paper that says, hey, we have a shared parking agreement, be helpful to the board, it sounds like it. Our people are going to park down there, go to CVS, go to the Pantai, and then go to the library, probably. So, anyway, we are working on that as well. Well, you know, one of the conditions that I could see is if you had a shared point park with some other entity, yes. that if you're advertising something for the auditorium use that you say the overflow parking is at wherever. Sure. And, and, you know, that tells people where they should go to park. But, uh, you know, Hopkinton is a, a culture of driving a car. I mean, every family here probably has at least two. I mean, we don't, we don't walk anywhere as much as we should, uh, but we just don't. And if we don't have accommodations for it, and in our bylaw, already gives you 50%. I mean, that's, that's, the, that, that's the fudge factor that's in the bylaw already. And, you know, we're going to be imposing on all the neighborhoods around this area. I, but you, and, and the streets aren't set up for parking of that density, as we heard the last time. I mean, Church Street can't handle two-way traffic and parking on both sides. Right. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not even like some of the Boston streets, so at least you can kind of park on it and you can drive two lanes. But you, if, you, if you think about it, though, you're kind of, kind of blowing on the negative. If you think about the positive, <coughs> this project is bringing an extra 24 spaces downtown that no other project in downtown can do. So that, that, I think that's a positive. Is the discussion with the church um, free parking or any kind of remuneration from the town for renting spaces, or is it simply asking out of the goodness of their heart? For, for which one? The, for the church, the Catholic John's. Church, St. John's. The discussion I, is about shared. I don't know why. Because there's also there's also the Korean church across the street, which has yep. a smaller but an adequate parking lot. And you took a little here and a little there, um, you know. And if there were some incentive for these, that's, these that's groups. a good example. I mean, that's that's a very crowded place. I know it's on a Sunday, but yeah. they find a way to <clears throat> the ten minutes. No, I'm just I'm just saying another resource to pick up some parking spaces. If you're in con if you're in discussions with St. John's, maybe they're could be some willingness on certain nights, not the nights they're holding services, but yeah, you know, I think we're going to have to just try to pick up parking here, there, and the other. Not going to get it all in one. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe with St. John's, but no, St. John's may not so get it all in one one place. I mean, Korean Church, I think, has not been the small. No, but not the, the, the smallest. They just don't encourage any non-use no, of the use right. anywhere. No, right. They don't. And it's you know it's kind of like the Hopkinton drug sign at this point. But if you if you're looking at strict interpretation of the bylaw, we we need to pick up what, eleven or twelve spaces. 
<coughs> if we can only count four in the front and our 24, that's 28. And we need 39? So we no, you think we're asking for 19. According to my calculation, you need 24. I think Which that was based on... After, after using the spaces on the street and the parking lot? There's 20 in the parking lot, there's so 3 in the front. Uh, and you need nine, 94 divided by 2 is 47. Subtract out 23 gives you uh, 24. Yeah, there's a little difference over between your calculations. Well, there's a little difference depending on the 94. Yeah. Okay. Between 19 and 24. Yeah. So somewhere. <laughs> we'll get we'll, 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 we'll the 19 to 24 house for, for today. Why don't we leave it as a kind of an action item? We'll come back to this one with better solutions. I, I just want to add one thing about Center School. When that gets decommissioned, we can pick up quite a few parking spaces just in that aisle um, on the south side, and assuming that whatever repurposing happens with that building, then the parking could be reconfigured. It might all go in the back. You wouldn't need that, that playground right. that's in the back anymore. So, you know, maybe you could, you know, kind of cobble something together for the short term with there could be, a, you know, a very viable long-term solution expanding around the common and the school. It, it was Except for what the, you never know what that what that use is going yeah. to be too. Well, no, we haven't it, figured that out yet, Claire. No, that's correct. Except if you just use that building, all that area in back where the playground is now probably sure. wouldn't need a school use and you could reconfigure, you could do all parking back there for maybe the building use and have some, you know, I'm just saying that's opening up a good sized chunk of land which is a straight shot up the common walkway and you're at the corner. It's really not yeah. unusual an unusual distance to go from the corner center school up the common. Yep. I'm just Great. saying it may need to get solved in short term and long term, long -term pieces. Sure. If there's light at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to just kick yeah. the can down the road, but if there was some viable alternative a few years down. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yep. Uh, I have an online question. Do we have the ability taking a big assumption that by the time it opens, something will be addressed. Do we have the ability to say, until it's addressed, to limit the number of people within that function room? And say, <coughs> until the time that additional parking is met, then that function room can only have X number of people. We do that with restaurant seats, for example. Um, parking is limited. The restaurant seats are limited. So. I would know it's because we don't do my number of seats, but it's just hours of operating. We only do meetings when we're not having a function at town hall or something like that. But this might give you an ability until something's locked up to get approval right. without having to have right. a complicated meeting and then have by the time the library is up and open, if the parking is addressed, then everything goes away. I always come back to amend the site plan review and, and lift that restriction. Right, yeah. right. But I was thinking the condition would be that we wouldn't want to limit the spaces to 50 instead of 100 in case we want to invite Stephen King on a Sunday afternoon when there's plenty of parking. Well, we wouldn't want to violate the Right. Mm -hmm. well, it, it's also hard to directly tie the number of people in the auditorium to the number of parking spaces. You might have, I mean, a, you know, parent with two or three kids, that's still only one parking space. So yeah, the numbers aren't really... The three the parking kids parking and grandma and grandpa come in, you know, in separate cars. Oh, <laughs> they like they do at the soccer field. They all could come in one. <laughs> I'm just saying, it doesn't correlate directly. No, I don't think it does. And the library use and the meeting space use are probably not going to coincide. Not with not with about 100 people in. But we'll 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 take that next time and work on it. Work on parking. Try to come up with a, a way that we can get work to improve it. Yeah. Yeah. Any better alternative site that isn't currently used would work. For, okay. For me, anyway. All right. 
Okay, I think we'll come, we'll come back to that one. Site lighting. Uh, light pole lighting. Oh, by the way, the public is, is more than welcome to comment on all of these as we're going through the discussion. So if anyone had anything to talk about parking or any, any ideas on how to solve the problem, we're looking for, for problem solvers too. So, I mean, don't be shy. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we're on the site lighting. Okay, site lighting. Do we we've got only a couple of lights in the in the, the uh, parking lot. I think if I remember right. We had two standalone lights in the back of the parking lot and two coming off the building to light the parking lot. And Claire, did you look at foot candles? We always look to you on that one. I thought we looked at that the other time and it was okay. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we submitted the photometrics. I think we were all set. Okay. Yeah, the uh, design review committee or historic district and it had questions on the flagpole lighting. Well, we wanted the flag. Well, we, we have to have the flag. Yeah. Yeah, we're take it down. yeah but at, the la at our last meeting, there was a discussion about the LED certification and blah, 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 and uplighting, but the bylaw specifically allows the uplighting if it's for a flag. Right. And I, and I think we want we think we want uplight the flag, and we'll, have to, we'll have to deal with the lead issue. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some other way. What about lighting of the entrance of the church, you know, where people will be accessing the auditorium? Lighting the walkway, the zigzag walkway. Yeah, that they'll be bothered um, um, we have me hiding yeah. small ballers as you go out. Okay. Are they on a plan somewhere? I think they were in the photo metric. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you pull that one out? Are those bollards freestanding or are they in the wall? Flat flush in the wall. They're actually set in the plant bed next to the sidewalk. In the bed. Yes. Okay, so a sidewalk plow is not going to take them out. That's the one plan that's going to be on the C6. and it's in the planning bed and it's underneath three feet of snow. Is it going to be just a glowing snow bank or how does that work? Uh, well, I mean, you certainly could clean out around them because they're, they're adjacent to the sidewalk. They're close to the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, they only stick up about a foot. So the idea is, is that they shed light directly onto the, onto the footpath so they're close by. And when you shovel by them, you'll have very little space between where you park, where your walking space is and, and the light source itself. And the heat of the light will melt up that. Sure. Yeah. They said it's the um, that's the that's the baller that you see down there. And this um, we show it all. This this is the older. But we had come all the way across just on the outside of the, uh, the walkway on uh, both sides. Okay, so the ballers are only up in front. Nothing along the Church Street side too. On well, the Church Street sidewalk, isn't it? There's yeah. a couple. There's a couple? Okay. And, and, and how do you like the handicap path back to the parking lot from the Church Street entrance? I won't say handicap, the, the, the level. This walkway here? Yes, walkway. that walk. Is that uh, it? I think these are, I, I didn't do this plan, so I'm, I'm speaking a little uh, out of school. We have. Um, there's a covered porch right here mm -hmm. that has lights in it that light up this area. Mm -hmm. There's step lights in the steps themselves. Okay. And then there is lighting built up underneath the canopy over here that shines down in this area. Okay. And 
then we have lights mounted on building and then on, on poles on the opposite side of the bike lane. While you're up there, <coughs> none of the light, light spills over across to your neighbors? So we're reading zero all the way around and these are all shielded. Uh, and what's the highest on the parking lot? I'm asking Claire's questions. Claire. The highest is, is probably uh, right right in between these two fixtures which are mounted on the wall. We're at about three and a half. Right in there. But this is 5.6 right into this. Ooh. Kind of a hot spot. Um, it, it's a function of really trying to keep these things low. Um, if we jack these things up a lot higher, we can make the lights a lot, a lot even, a lot more even. Um, but even though they're shielded, you may still be able to see the light source from your from your house, and we're trying to keep that lower. And the only other real solution is to, is to add a lot more lights uh, in order to try to even that out. We had to, we had a discussion with the design review board and went back to our engineers to discuss it. And those are really what the options are: get a lot higher or add a lot more fixtures to even it out. But those go out. We don't want them higher. Do we, do, do we meet the standards? Well, the standard to deal with a lot of them. No, no, the, no, the yeah, other standard yeah, is very or uniformity oh, standard. Yeah, yeah, it's one to fifteen, min to max. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not five point six is not. You know, it's, yeah, it's a little bit bright, but but it's still but right at the door. You know, still within the standard. And they go out after hours, right? We're going to talk about that next. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Mike Rowan, yep. Six Hayden Road. Um, what is the height of the light sources on the lights of, on the building and the ones in the parking lot? It, it will set it about ten. Mr. Chairman, Jim, Jim Walker, Eight Hayden Row. What is the schedule for the lights to uh, go off? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Great question. Lead us right into it. Typically, we would turn the lights off for business, what, a half an hour to an hour after closing, you know, to allow the employees to, to get out in a safe manner. It's been, what, a half an hour or an hour, right? Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's in that range. It's reasonable. The latest we still open is 8 o'clock on that? Yeah. And then, if you had a special event in the auditorium, I guess you change the lights for that day. We have to change the yeah, program that day. Yeah. Uh, but maybe not after, I don't know, 11? You know, or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, the latest. Well, if you had a 10 o'clock meeting here, you know, if the planning board used that nice auditorium, it's <laughs> better than this meeting room. You know, we'd be out of here by 11. I mean, I think to me that's the maximum. Feels right. Any comments? Well, what, whatever you feel is reasonable in this thing, I don't think the project really cares. So, Mr. Chairman, yeah. would you put restrictions then on? the meeting times they could use that auditorium as part of your condition. We sometimes have put operating restrictions on businesses, but very rarely. Very rarely. I, don't, I can't think of any. The bylaw has some for restaurants, but board decisions, I can't think of any. Okay. Dumpsters. Dumpster and obtain were really just tougher on, but I mean, I think there's the meeting room. Well, I mean, the library itself isn't going to be open too many really late evenings because you know, but you normally out of there what seven? Uh, three days a week we're open until eight. At eight, so you know, the light will be off at nine yeah. on those days. Yeah. If somebody had a meeting there, which you know, I guess I would hope that they would have meetings there because that's why we're building it. Yeah. Uh, you know, meeting ending at 10, 10.30, and everyone's out, and the lights are off by 11. I'd, I'd, I would personally rather take it, and I'm just offering up for the board members as a trial balloon. You know, the latest the lights are on are at 11. 
period and, and then an hour after the normal closing or in the end of the week? Yeah. Well, that's his But I wouldn't want it so that they just leave the lights on until 11 every night to cover the bases. And those should only be on late if there's a late night function on all other off yeah, yeah. occasions. They should go out as soon sure. as they possibly can. Now, now, you might you leave the doorway lights for security, you know, yeah. like the porch lights, you know, keep the light on, and, you know, yeah. as opposed to. And I assume you have some, maybe something back on the back wall, that, or not the back wall, but the wall for some kind of light that acts as a security aspect of it, or? or you we don't have anything that's set on a motion detector at this point, no. They're, 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 they go on with the photo sensor, make it start, yep. and shut off by a time clock, which is adjustable. Right. Yeah, 65 days. But you have like entrance light, building light for the building code, etc. That's right. Do you have any of lights? I'm saying smaller ones that that work for the back of the parking lot or something like that that act as a security light as opposed to a keeping somebody safe. And, and not tripping. I mean, this is just to have enough light so the police, when they're riding down Church Street, can see that somebody's putting graffiti on the back wall. Uh, at, this, at this point, we do not. I mean, it, the idea is that the building would go dark at night. We're, we're, we're pursuing need certification, and so we're going to try to keep the building as dark as we can at night. And, okay. and, and, and unless there's a security concern, um, okay. then we would have <coughs> some kind of a minimal. I guess I don't care one way or the other, other than finding you know, graffiti in the room. <laughs> so I, would, I would be a little concerned if there's a fence, or one off the fence. Mm -hmm. um, if it has to be a manual intervention to turn the lights on, past, let's say you set it so it's 9 o'clock, because that's nights that it's libraries and then there's different events. Who would be in charge of making sure that it stays on and it goes off by 11 o'clock? And I say that only because I'm very cognizant of what goes on at the Little League fields that go on during the events. And when it has to be done manually, people forget. And when they forget, you get phone calls. So I just would be conscious of the butters that, you know, what lights are on, something happens, people forget, and those lights stay on and you know, pass right. the pass them all the time. So it's more of an operational question that um, we're bound to create up. Well, I was thinking of, uh, we'll take that as kind of an action item to That's figure out how the timing yep. works so we can see if there's a multiple shut off timer that we can. Yeah. Well, I, would, I would say Brand's idea is we would have to do manual because we look at the, we have events at the senior center, it would be very similar where it's a town building and there's uh, someone in charge. We may not know who's in charge right now for events or anything, but it's um, Dave's raising his hand, he's in charge. Uh, uh, it, when there's a, you know, like the senior center, like you say, Frank, it goes off a half hour after employees are supposed to leave. There's, there's a manual override if somebody's there late, you just press a button, and then the lights will be on so that they can leave. So then they can shut off half hour after that. So for late events, there's always going to be a town employee in charge of closing the building, um, you know, cleaning up, and, and they'll shut the, the lights off, and it'll automatically go back to the automatic cycle. Okay. The only way there's a, it'll stay on overnight if there's a mechanical malfunction. Other, other public comment on lighting. Have you got enough to write the conditions on lighting? Okay. No, I see none. We're, we're, we're done with lighting, I think. Uh, building design. Claire, what was the design review comments? I think we're... Um, again, design review kind of didn't really do too much with it because this required a historic district commission certificate. So they took the lead on this and they did get their uh, certificate approval on June 18th for, and whatever that, that's the plan that's <coughs> going forward. So. Okay. Planning board members or public comments on building design? That was kind of interesting in the last connection. Just a point of clarification. I, I just have one issue regarding <coughs> the two lots um, and, and how the interpretation is of the um, setbacks. I don't know if this is relevant to the building design or if there's another 
we, we've got one called zoning compliance and combining the lots coming up. Okay. It might be a little closer, but it, you're kind of leading into it. But I mean, that's more of a where it's located on the lot. But uh, uh, usually we talk about aesthetics in kind of this area. I don't see any great comments. Sport is usually allows the applicant to go pretty much free reign on that anyway. Okay. Signage. And I think you talked a little bit about it, about leaving the old sign or whatever. And we want to leave the existing sign. So, or something. so that's, that's no, no real changes. No. Okay. That's your main well, technically, the managers is on Main Street, but uh, we're, not, we're not proposing any signage on it. At this point, no. 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 If you were interested, I would, I would just add something that you should just follow up about the right. evidence. Yeah. What happens yeah. in front of the 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 on the, rather than a freestyle, you could put something on the wall if you wanted. Will but it be a plaque that says book drop off? Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Probably be a plaque that will be a piece of printed paper that says if you want to go to the event, go around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> the other so plaque on the wall with the date. With the date often, you know, I think. Yeah have the date that the church was built chiseled in the cornerstone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Think, Put the uh, date of the addition yeah. on it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next yeah. item up on the agenda is landscaping, neighbor buffers, and existing trees. I think we've heard, why don't you pull that one board out there? Yeah, we, we spoke about it last time, but there's a full landscape plan which hasn't changed. Um, we're providing more trees and shrubs than what's required um, under zoning. And the back fence is staying, putting a new side fence and supplementing it with um, trees. The, the, the main tree at the corner of Main Street and Church is a significant one on the bottom left. That's a, we stay, not only staying, but we moved all utilities and, and disturbance away from that area. And then those two, there's two street, street trees on Main Street, which are shown, that are existing. So one in the back, in the middle of the parking lot. And that yeah, tree was existing. existing. So you're planting four new big ones along the southern boundary, and yeah. one on the entrance. Yeah. The entrance. Did you say that there's a fence along those, this one? Uh, along the back of the fence, mm -hmm. uh, six foot fence. Yeah. And along the side, there's no fence, no and we're putting the fence in. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, Sue Hadley, for Hayden Hall. At the last meeting, there was discussion about adding some screening along the fence, um, along our property line, um, which is the section of uh, the addition. Um, before, yes. So it is, um, we are using our existing fence, it's a six foot fence, um, and we're losing all of the trees and vegetation from our viewpoint. Um, and at the last meeting we talked about exploring other options, and I'm wondering if there's been progress on that. Um, these, these plants um, at this point are in the upper body, is that yeah. right, mm -hmm. showing up? And they're going to max out at about six feet tall. Do I have that right? And it's because the fence that we're looking at here is about six feet. If we continue these along, I don't know that you'd really get much of a benefit. Um, and we're concerned about adding anything larger in this area that that may drop leaves or, or branches, uh, anything on the on the skylight that we have here in the rear. Um, but we certainly could look at doing some smaller plants there. I'm not sure how much they would poke up above your fence. Okay. I think the whole point was to add greenery. Mm -hmm. You've taken down all of the trees, all of the shrub, all of the vegetation. So what we'd be looking at is our six-foot wooden fence and then the building. So couldn't you do some taller evergreens? If something was planted 
that was above the height of the fence, mm -hmm. that that would get plenty of um, light in order to grow. Um, I know there are very tall arborvitaes, and those are evergreens and do not drop leaves, don't have huge branches. I just um, would really, really like to request some sort of greenery to soften the impact. I don't, I don't see why we could do that. Get a, get a plant that can grow up above the above the stockade fence. Yes. But we can't we can't have something that spreads. It would have to be kind of column type shape. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right. the, there, are, there are junipers that grow very you know like right. pointy and yeah. tall and yeah. thin, and they keep that narrow shape. And okay. there are um, you know there are are variety varieties that grow. Much taller. Yeah, I think there's, there's some that can grow much taller, six feet. <coughs> yeah, so I mean, okay. you know, I know you guys have tried really hard to mitigate the impact, and you know, to some extent, you can't get the blood out of the stone. The house is here, and the library's there, mm -hmm. but um, you know, screening for light and sound is is one real important mitigation for the. I don't, I don't see why we can't take that as an action and see if we can get something to go down a long, uh, suit back property line. Yeah. 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 Take a look. Yeah. Do you have windows on that on, on that eastern on, on the, that area? Is there windows or is that a solid color? No, no, we do have windows along that side. Uh, they're rather narrow, um, and they're a little yeah. uh, they're a little smaller. Um, and actually, up on the second floor, the the sills are actually quite high to yeah. kind of keep folks from looking out onto the. So we can bring natural light into the building on the upper floor of the. It, it also provides some privacy from the folks that would have a vantage point to look down at the neighbor's yards. And, and I did ask at the last meeting, I know, about some of those windows and skylights, and I think you assured us that there was some kind of railing or fencing or something around that prevent, would prevent someone, a child, from walking on those? Yes. Okay. Is it, is it a pretty good impediment to someone? getting on the window and jumping up and down on it. Yes. I, I, that I, happens. Uh, like any other fence, is it climbable? Sure. Uh, but I but it's, it's, a, it's a barrier. It's a, it's a, it's a different deterrent. Yeah. Um, and we're looking at something that's about three and a half feet tall. Okay. Okay. Just for uh, clarity through the chair, sure. uh, just for, I think we have consensus that, do we have consensus, I think, that we want to, to ask for the higher ever V-Day or other solutions, and that, that is our preference. Um, I think do we have agreement. I think, I'm very much for that, and I think that I don't want us to lose that point. Uh, well, why, don't, why don't we in, in leave process. it as an action item for them, and we'll, we'll stop here right about now because we are at our function hour so that we can turn the lights off in the back parking lot. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I will have more comments about the landscaping design in the next meeting. Okay, we, we, we will we will not say that that is closed at this point, and we'll bring it up fresh at uh, at the next meeting. We'll start with that. Great. And we will get to your questions about lot sizes and stuff. I assure you. Okay, uh, Mr. Lane. Oh, what? Is there any way that we could get those comments? To the design team. Uh, the well, why don't, I, why don't we get together? You guys can meet together. Okay. Talk. Yep. Go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Work, work with the abutters if yep. you can. Thank anyway, you. sir. Could you just confirm when the next meeting is? We're going to do that just now. Thank you. The way? The September 28th is the next meeting. What uh, time do you want us? 8:15. 8:15. Mm -hmm. When we can fit the next time in. So we're talking, looking for a motion to continue the public hearing to 8:15 on. 28th of September. Sunday. Second. Second. Further discussion, seeing that how you vote. Aye. 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 Okay. okay, we've got uh, a few items left to do. Uh, the uh, 
Zoning Advisory Committee. Um, we have a, another uh, volunteer, Brian Brown. Brian, but. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, Jean is Kurt. Uh, yes. Okay. Just make sure show up and <laughs> Okay. Thanks. Um, look for a motion to appoint Brian Brown as a member at large of the Zoning Advisory Committee. Okay. Okay. Second. 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 Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Also, uh, since the, the agenda was done in motion, yeah, I got that. I got this okay. right here. <laughs> this next, I'd like to accept the resignation of Ann Beauchamp. Uh, she's decided that her time is needed. She needs to go out there, so uh, she's, she hasn't, hasn't been to any meetings, but she has already resigned. So maybe smarter than the rest of no. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, motion to accept the resignation of Ann Bochamp. So, second. seconded. Uh, are you ready for a vote? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, now we're on the approval of minutes. We just started. Approval of minutes for the 10th of August. Any comments to the 10th of August? Um, um. No. If not, let's look for a motion to uh, accept the minutes of the 10th of August. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Approving the minutes for the 24th of August. Any comments? I have one comment. Okay. Um, I just gotta find my place again. Um, <coughs> um, never mind, it's minor. Okay, Frank? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's minor. I, no, 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 no. Okay, uh, looking for a motion to approve the uh, minutes for the 24th of August. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Stating none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone abstain or vote no or abstain? Okay, motion. Minutes are approved. Uh, now we're here. Uh, board member work. We're trying to work on the master plan for next meeting, so you're supposed to be working on your goals and stuff. I'm not sure we're going to have enough time in the agenda because we've already got a couple of public hearings continued that we're going to be able to handle all of them. But at least some of you, us maybe, that get theirs done, we'll start talking about those. And we might let somebody slip if they. Do you want us to actually do the wordsmithing or just make the points, the comments about things to be changed or included and, and whoever's been doing the writing is probably Wayne can then... Rough draft is fine. Yeah, I mean, whatever you have time to do, but I think the important thing is the, the goal points. Yeah, yeah. The recommendation yeah. points to be included. And, 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 a, and a hard hard look at all the words that are in that chapter, too. Okay. Uh, next thing is uh, CPC is accepting projects for funding uh, for 2017 fiscal year. For those that are historical or open space, the 13th of October is the last date to submit a project. So uh, that cycle is Starting up, CPC is having a meeting this Thursday, I believe. 
it's not going to be a really exciting meeting because we have no projects to look at in front of us but, uh, at this point. But, uh, Would that be an appropriate time if there were questions to be raised about funding a project that's just been funded in this previous year? Sure. If so, there were discussions so, for amending things or something. Talk to Henry <coughs> Kinnicky. Yeah, okay. It's Thursday night. I think it's Thursday night. Day after tomorrow. Yeah. And I think Zach is meeting tomorrow night at tomorrow. 7. Thank you for the plug. And uh, hopefully your new Brian Brown will get sworn in tomorrow. That would be good. If we did, we did uh, appoint him. And I think your first order of business is to appoint a chairman and then set the hearing, public hearing date, right? That's correct. So. It's going to be a fun first meeting, I guess. Always. All the meetings are fun. They were, they, they, they've had great chairman in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Present company, our boss. Present company included. 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 Okay, and other than that, I think our next meeting in September is going to be fairly full. Chairman, yeah. yeah. before that one point on this uh, Eagle Scout, is it Matthew? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Looks like he's looking for publicity. Yes, <laughs> hikers. That's, that's, one, of our, that's yes. one of our open space yes. subdivisions uh, yeah. that he basically reconditioned the trail on. Right, right. for an eagle project. Yep. Franklin. Cross Street somewhere. Franklin yeah. across. But it's, it's on Franklin after it intersects Cross. I think. Yes, I if you keep yeah. going, Cross Street crosses yeah. it where Brook Hollow is, and then you go down, it's still in Franklin. Right. Just before Brook Hollow. Right. On well, right. you back at Brook Hollow. No, if you're going, it. Around Franklin. First you pass Liberty Mutual on your yeah. left, yeah. and then Cross Street crosses, yeah. Yeah. and Brook Hollow is down on Cross Street, and then you continue on Franklin, it would be, I believe, on your left. It backs up to the Brook Hollow, the back of the Brook Hollow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The north side of yeah. it. That might be a pretty good trail, but the try once the leaves uh, the start to turn. There are sections of it that are right up into somebody's yard, which is a little awkward, but Dawn and I have a date. <laughs> what? Dawn and I have a date. Oh, okay. So uh, we've got that. Let's see. Any other, any other committees? How's open space going? Everything? Open oh, space good. We didn't have a meeting this month because we had nothing for the agenda. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're looking for projects to fund, as you can see, potentially. And, uh, so, anyway, anyone else have anything else? Let's get out of here with five minutes to spare for a change. We'll look for a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Elaine, I got everything covered? Yes. Okay. Second. 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 I think we're ready for the vote. All those in favor of the journey, say aye. 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 We're going to vote. We're going to abstain. Thank you very much, H.K. Oh.